All right, we're here at the Grizzle Patio PDAC Series, third edition with none other than Galen McNamara, Suma Silver. Galen, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. We got the fire, we got the sauna. So it's happening. Galen, you manage a silver company. You understand the dynamics of silver. Demand is interesting, right? Because people think gold, silver, right? Gold moves and silver's got that torque. But silver's, it's got an interesting other leg where you've got two real drivers of demand. Talk to us about the macro of demand for silver. Sure, well, you know, silver is a little bit different than gold in several key ways. You know, the first is, hey, you know, we, we all own, you know, a lot of people do, I do, own yeah. silver coins, you know, yeah, yeah. and actually have some and silver stacking, and people who do that take it very seriously. Of course. So that's a big application of, you know, actually owning precious metals, yeah. right? But that's one, but the other one that uh, silver has that gold doesn't really have is there's a much more industrial usage yeah. for silver. And what's really evolving in the last, I don't know, year or two years or more, yeah. you know, is this this idea that a little bit of silver goes into every every solar panel. And if we're making large amounts of solar panels, it has a very material difference on the demand side uh, of the silver market, yeah. you know, like maybe 10, 20, 30 percent of the entire market. Yeah. Uh, and if and if you believe the International Energy Agency, you know, maybe even more than that, you know, yeah. that's what their statistics are. So, you know, there's there really is a it's a it's a little bit of a, you know, double you know, two, yeah. two reasons why silver can really run relative so, to gold. You know, it's interesting, right? Because when people think about battery metals, people talk about the copper, you know, the lithium, nickel, but no one talks about, in, in the electric metal context, about silver. And when you think about it, silver's had almost as important of an impact to supply demand yeah. as any of the, as, as uh, EVs has had to those electric metals. Is that fair to say? I, I think so because it's silver's like the glue yep. in these systems and it's a little bit of a bottleneck where you can't, you can't substitute it for other stuff, right? Because it has really high conductance. So it's really important from an electrical perspective in that way. So just silver is also such a small market that if there's a little bit of silver and all of these new components yeah. and all of these new things that we build and we build them on a big scale, yeah. right? It, it, it's very material. Yeah, yeah. And so that's this demand side and it's been, uh, it's, it's a nice setup on the demand side. Mm. Talk to us about the supply side. And we've seen 10 years of just challenge structural production. Like it's, why is that the case? And maybe you can talk to us, like the, big picture of why supply has been so challenged, given all these strong drivers on the demand side. Sure, well, you know what? It, it comes down to what, what we have on Earth, right? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, good yeah. deposits are really hard to find, really right. difficult to find, and they're very rare when it comes to silver, yeah. especially high-grade deposits. You know, they're, uh, so, so, you know, there's a premium on those deposits when you're looking for them and when you find them, yeah. and that's why silver stocks, you know, often run in bull markets. Of you course, know, yeah, That's yeah. one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah. Right, but, but also mining is also very hard, right? You know, you think that you can just, you know, dig it, put a shovel in the ground and dig out the ore and, and get some silver out of it. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's not quite like that, right? right. It's, it's can be very hard, number one. So that there, there, there are those reasons, but then, you know, I even think geopolitically, you know, in, in countries that are not first world, yeah. you know, they don't have the same labor standards, environmental standards, you know, that we may have here in Canada or in the United States. Uh, and it's just not the best recipe, I think, yeah. to maintain uh, a really consistent supply. So it's, it's hard to find, more challenged. You've got a differentiated strategy. Whenever, whenever we, I, you know, we sit down and chat, I always, I always, it's always interesting because I always feel like you're like looking for the honest to goodness, like just damn, you, you, you're like a Inspector Clouseau, right? Find it, you know, so you have a diff, diff yeah, no, but you got, you know, but you got this, you know, like you, like looking for, looking for, you know, clues across yeah. the, you talk to us about your exploration strategy, because, because it really is like, I, I feel like you're, you're putting all the pieces together. Yeah, that's it. It's it's putting the pieces together, uh, and we work in these places that, in their day, a hundred years ago, were like these wild west, you know, towns yeah. that produced a lot of gold and silver. Yeah. So we have a lot of those records from the old mining back then. You know, it's all paper. There's a thousand maps or something, but we can today with the tools we have in computers and 3D models, we can get everything into the computer and look at it in 3D and yes. spin it around in 3D and build these shapes that show where the veins are. And if you can do all that and put in that legwork, you know, it gets really easy to say, let's drill here. Right. You know. So uh, we're lucky that we have data-rich projects with a legacy of extensive mining, and we can use that yeah. 
to really boil down all this information into something as simple as, okay, we're going to drill a hole here. Yeah. Right, and and the work that goes into it is you know hundreds of hours, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but 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 it is a little bit of reading the tea leaves in some ways, but but also it's a it's a modern science based approach to discovery. And that science based approach, you got two properties, yeah. uh, Nevada, New Mexico. Talk to us about those two properties. Yeah, so we just finished up uh, drilling in New Mexico uh, this year. We took a really precise approach to stepping out, and it kind of felt like the the holes were maybe wildcat holes, yeah. but they're based on all the work that we did previously all the information that we had before so we just and, and that really is like when you when people think wildcat holes but you put all that yeah. you put you put the work in yeah that's right that's yeah. right the work goes in so uh, we announced a, a result from uh, just recently I think it was last week uh, a 1.4 kilometer step out hit seven and a half meters of 390 grams per ton yeah, silver incredible. equivalent so it's and that's just one hole right yeah. and then we have a couple more holes that are still pending uh, with interesting looking veins that may, might be new we're still trying to figure it out um, and the idea was to prove prospectivity, improve mineralization yep. over a strike of two kilometers, which I think now we've done. The two kilometers, that's great. That's like, yep. you know, there could be a lot of ounces in that two kilometers. But I mean, even bigger picture in New Mexico, there's 77 kilometers of vein on the project that right. hasn't seen much or any exploration. Right. So, you know, I think that in my opinion, just in my opinion, this is the most northerly of those great Mexican silver vein fields, you know, that have been produced, been producing since like going back to the 1500s in the wow. Spanish or even before that with indigenous people. Right. You know, so uh, that's my view of the perspective, but uh, you know, I am biased, obviously. Yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. My, my geologist's hat on. So that's uh, uh, New Mexico. That's New Mexico. The other project in Nevada, uh, it's the eastern half of the old Tonopah Mining District okay. and its extensions, which I, which I staked a few years ago. Uh, and that one, again, this past summer, uh, we stepped out, stepped out up to four kilometers outside of the district along, along the trend. Okay. You know, and after where the veins end, we just pretended they would keep going and we stepped out, right? And again, based on a lot of work, uh, and, and I think it was a four plus kilometer hole from the district, you know, hit, you know, not much, but got a nice little start. Uh, and also found a new vein out there a little closer to the district that was a high grade vein. So, big picture, okay, so why does that all matter? Yeah. Well, all right, so if Tonopah produced 175 million ounces of silver and it did, and we've now stepped out, you know, double what the length of that production was, they doubled it. You know, where's the next 175 million ounces? Where's the next 200 million ounces? You know, that's what we want to find. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big game hunting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, big game yeah, hunting. Yeah, that, that's right. It's, it's elephant hunting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So l looking out to the, so you've got these two distinct projects with, with real big game hunting opportunity. What's the next year look like for you? We got a, we got an incredible macro backdrop for silver. So I think, you know, the commodity is going to do its thing. Uh, talk to us about the exploration uh, ahead. Yeah. So for us right now, we're going to continue to very precisely add value to the projects okay. with very uh, targeted drill holes is really what our plan is. So we can show and we can, instead of me just talking and saying, hey, I think there's 100 million ounces here, like waving my arms, I can actually have evidence to say, okay, guys, if we... If we drill these holes, we'll show a path to that, and then we can think about coming back and really drilling it out on both projects. I guess just wrapping on the, uh, you're in two mining friendly jurisdictions, and that's super important in today's sure. geopolitical climate. You, maybe you talk to talk to us about just yeah. the advantages of both those both those well, states. Well, for sure, and you know, there's a special there's a special interest in American mining districts with investors right because it's you know it's a you're investing in yeah. at, at home or close to home sure. you know you're not necessarily going to strange places where you don't know if property rights matter because right. if there's one thing that matters in the United States and especially the western United States it's property rights right right or more there's many things that's one thing right so I think that's very important Nevada consistently ranks one two or three in the Fraser ind index you know best places to do mining projects right. or whatever that whatever that uh, the actual statistic yeah, is yeah, called but yeah, it's yeah, always yeah, in yeah. the one one top top two or three for sure um, and then, yeah, so I, I, I'm very bullish on the U.S. and Canada for that matter because, you know, we look at what's going on in the world today and I feel like there's a new iron curtain. So, yeah. you know, when I think about where we're going to get our valuable resources from, yeah. you know, like I, I think it should be countries like ours because we have labor standards. Yeah. Right, so you know we don't. Money doesn't go to you know some dictator somewhere. That's right. Yeah, you know, we have environmental standards, so we're not exporting our pollution to somewhere that has zero. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, and and yeah, you know that. No, those those two are really important, right? Like, and that kind of a 
you know, bigger picture, you're seeing this happen, especially uh, in the battery metals chain, right? Yeah. You're, see, you're seeing like new supply chains develop and I think you're really gonna get this renaissance of the value of mining from America and, mm. and, and Canada. Mm -hmm. The places, that, places where the rule of law matters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's Galen McNamara, Suma Silver on the, on the Grizzle uh, Patio yeah. Pete Hack series. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm in Muskoka. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We're, we're, we're doing that in Toronto. Uh, Galen, a pleasure, always a pleasure, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you.